Okay, a um, little bit of hardware certification, hardware testing with the ICI Do version 11.1. This is our uh, release version that we released earlier in May of 2017. This is a data set that is, uh, as you can see, showing the Passat uh, demo. This is a virtual services demo, and we're going to be super scientifically testing it uh, today using um, HMD that I have scientifically attached to a chair and able to uh, let me do some uh, software uh, benchmarking while still uh, simulating the VR experience. And, and of course, want to thank Fujitsu for the use of this uh, absolutely marvelous uh, Celsius H970 workstation that I've been using for this benchmark testing this week. All right. Now this is an even larger model. This is a 170 million polygon Bombardier Talent 2 train. I'm going to go ahead and activate the HMD. And the frame rates have definitely fallen through the floor. Um, now, that's not the, uh, the end of the story there, because uh, if you think about the size of that model overall, um, you would say, who's working with models quite that large um, on these types of data sets? And that's probably a reasonable question to ask yourselves. You know, are people actually using such large data sets uh, when they're working with uh, ICI Do? But uh, people probably want to. The good news is that uh, coming up in version 11. Uh, two come some enhancements that I'm going to demonstrate in just one moment. The new capability of occlusion culling. All right. Um, last but not least, here we are opening up a version of uh, a pre-alpha version of 11.2, which we anticipate will. Um, greatly improve the overall performance of ICI Do through the use of a special algorithm powered by NVIDIA for doing occlusion calling. Occlusion calling means that um, if we can't see a certain portion of the train, that's going to overall improve the rendering performance. So here we are, just to give you a brief overview of what that occlusion calling means. Um, right now, we're looking straight onto the train and you can see here that the frame rates this is just the uh, the mono rendering of the frame rates without the HMD active um, well over a hundred frames per second and that's because at present uh, with occlusion calling running 99.5 percent of the train is not visible and therefore not being rendered and if I just uh, freeze the culling result you can see here that in fact the only part of the train that was being rendered was what was directly visible um, based on that original point of view and that's why we're getting such uh, massive uh, performance overall for the for the rendering if we make the rest of the train visible again you'll see that rendering performance drop back down if we go inside the train you know, now we're looking at highly detailed geometry inside the train and of course uh, a lot of the train is being hidden from our point of view right at this point 97.5 percent of the train is being occluded from us but we can see there's a lot of detail in the amount of uh, geometry which is being displayed on the screen and therefore the the relative drop in frame performance so visible on the sc uh, screen right now is something you know as complex and just as big a model as those Volkswagen Passats that we were looking at now, but being rendered uh, thanks to the benefit of occlusion calling. So if we look and freeze those results, you can see that, in fact, uh, the algorithm uh, powered by ICI Do and our implementation of the VR Works occlusion calling did in fact uh, mean that we were not rendering as much of the train as we would have if we were looking at it uh, from this kind of point of view. So if we go ahead and see how this performs now with the HMD activated, we'll go ahead and activate the HMD. So overall that performance is pretty darn good and that's very impressive that we're not dropping down below, much down below 45 frames per second, maybe every once in a while dropping down to 30 frames per second. 
but still this is 160 million polygons inside of the math model being kept alive at all times but being real-time rendered so that even when I turn my head really fast and see more of the train there's really no lag or me waiting around for that thing to render um, to my HMD so the performance is pretty darn spectacular and I have to say I'm very impressed with this Fujitsu laptop for being able to handle such a hefty model and of course thanks to the developers at ICI do for coming up with their new version which we anticipate will be publicly released with version 11.2 which will come out this fall and be able to benefit from the occlusion calling powered by NVIDIA. Alright, here's another demonstration scene with the uh, brand new uh, 11.2 prototype of the occlusion calling. Um, this again is uh, two different views of that Bombardier Transport uh, Talent 2 train. Um, we're just seeing the rendering performance of this on the P5000 uh, laptop. And here we are. Occasional drops of frame rates down below 45 frames per second, down to the ballpark of 29. Uh, 30 frames per second probably what most people would start to feel just a little bit of discomfort if they were wearing that uh, And they were doing some uh, HMD intensive work uh, in this case uh, One of the main reasons why we're seeing this drop in performance is because of the complexity of this scene I'm um, still somewhere in the ballpark of 170 million polygons, but now we're looking at uh, a version of the train that has uh, baked in um, retraced uh, imagery and appearances so that you can see a little bit of reflection inside the train. Let's go ahead and change our perspective a little bit and see if we can look at that a little bit differently. Let's just fly around here. But uh, generally, and again this is with the HMD active, you can see pretty darn good performance overall on a mobile workstation. Look how fantastic that train looks with those little reflections in there. And of course, this is a fully complex CAD model. In this case, it's the complete portion of the uh, engine part and a, uh, a car, right, a non powered car of this Bombardier uh, talent train with all of its complexity. And of course, thanks to occlusion calling we are able to render only those things that are visible from my perspective and my uh, point of view and not having to render the things that were not visible to me um, at that time. And again, thank you to NVIDIA for their uh, contributions to uh, the development of ICI do with their excellent VRWorks SDK and other capabilities inside of the NVIDIA uh, DesignWorks and VRWorks uh, SDKs and also to HTC for uh, providing us with these uh, HTC Vive Enterprise Editions. And of course, want to thank Fujitsu for the use of this uh, absolutely marvelous uh, Celsius H970 workstation that I've been using for this benchmark testing this week.